Guys, we're going to do 97 and 98 today. Um, we talked about two-step equations last week, um, but this time we're going to talk about two-step problems. So this is not related to two-step equations, so I don't want you guys to make sure you know that. Um, so here's what I'm let's, – let's get to that in a second. But we've done problems like this before where we have like – 5x plus 2, um, x equals 3. So we don't know what 5x plus 2 is, but when they give you the value of x, you can just plug it in, right? So 5 times 3 plus 2 is 17, right? So we're going to do the same kind of thing, except they're not just going to give you x equals 3. They're going to make you work for it. So this is why it's called two-step problems is... They're going to have you solve an equation first to find X and then have you plug in X. So here's example one. This is what I'm talking about. So if X, uh, if 2X plus 4 equals 6, then what is the value of 3X minus 7? Okay. So first step is solve this equation. So there's two steps in the two-step problems. First step is to solve the equation. You can probably do this in your head, but let's just, let's just solve it the way we do. We're going to get x by itself, so we're going to subtract 4 from both sides, right? So 2x equals 2, then divide by 2 x equals 1. So if x equals 1, now we're going to plug it in to 3x minus 7. All right. So 3x minus 7. So that's just 3 minus 7, which is negative 4. So that's it. You have to first solve the equation to find x, and then you have to plug that value in for x. Okay, so let's see if you guys can do this one. Here's example two. If 4x minus 2 equals 3, then what is the value of 2 fifths x minus 1 fourth? Ooh, that looks ugly. But let's not worry about that right now. Let's solve for x first. What'd you get when you solve for x? Well, let's try it. Add two. Add. Got Wait, some. Get out some paper or something. This is math class. Okay, so we're adding two. We're getting rid of that minus two to get rid of something. Emerson, two. Austin, can you guys stop doing that, please? That's distracting. So if you're subtracting two to get rid of subtracting two, you're going to add two to both sides. So 4x equals five, right? Well, now divide by four. So x equals five fourths. It's a fraction, but that's okay. Now we're going to plug that in for our x. So we have two fifths times x, which is 5 fourths, minus 1 fourth. Yeah, minus 1 fourth. OK. So let's just do this. This is we can, uh, we can cross cancel a little bit here. Nice. So then we end up with 1 half minus one fourth. Well, let's just do this pizza method. What's a half of pizza minus a fourth of pizza? That's one fourth. You can get a common denominator if you want or just visualize the pizza. So that's example two. So let's, uh, let's try one more example. If you guys are up for 
doing this for a free problem set. Here's example three, ready? So remember, you have to solve for X first and then you have to plug it in. So if four thirds X minus two equals four, then what is the value of six X minus two fifths? Can you see that problem? All right, so see if you can finish this two-step problem. So a lot of students will solve for X and forgot and forget that they still have to plug that in to six X minus two fifths. So don't make that mistake. This is two steps. This is a two-part problem. Oh, Austin and Emerson, why aren't you getting a paper and doing some of this? Huh? Are you trying yep. to figure out what to do? Well, it's probably easier to do it on paper than in your head. Hey, guys, take out paper. Do some math. Even if you're not going for a free problem set, be respectful and be a part of this class, please. So the fractions might slow you down a little bit, but it's still doable. And you're going to get, your answer is going to be um, kind of an ugly fraction, but it's the answer. So when you solve for X, you're going to get a fraction. And then you have to plug that fraction in to 6X minus 2 fifths. And then you'll get an even uglier fraction as your final answer. So. Can I answer her? Sorry. Go ahead, what do you got? Uh, over five. Nice, who said that? You get Henry, uh, Henry. Henry, nice work. That's a crazy fraction. 133 over five is what you said, right? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna do it together. I'm gonna give you a free problem set. I'm going to do that before I forget. One second here. One second. So, and you just, you just needed another free problem set, didn't you? You ran out. So now you're at six points. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to add two to both sides to get rid of that two. So you get four thirds X equals six. And then we have to divide by four thirds. Oh boy. So dividing by a fraction 
means copy dot flop. So six over one dot three fourths. Okay, I'm gonna simplify this a little bit. The six and four reduced to three and two. So then I get nine halves for X. So that's what I'm gonna plug in the six or into this thing. So six times nine halves is my X. And it's two fifths. All right, so this cancels one and three. So then I get 27 over one minus two fifths. Okay, common denominators, uh, five. So I have to multiply this sucker by five. So 135 fifths minus two fifths is 133 fifths. Good job. All right, that's it. That's two-step problems. Does that feel okay to you guys? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Feel okay? All right, I can't see anything, but I'm I'm assuming that it's okay. You got you got you got two thumbs. So. All right. All right, two thumbs out of out of five. Well, three. Out of ten, ten, I guess. Huh? We got five people here today. So ten thumbs, right? <laughs> Maybe six. All right, so let's move on to lesson 98. So we're gonna do a little bit more geometry today. Um, we're gonna talk about angles, different kinds of angles, uh, probably stuff that you already know, but let's, let's get into it. All right, so if I have a triangle here, We'll call it triangle ABC. Then um, this guy here, this is called angle A. And we would say angle A, here's angle B. And this is angle C. All right, and we already know that all the angles have to add up to 180. Um, so that's in a triangle. All right, let's think about a different scenario. Let's say we've got some rays happening. So remember rays are like, another word for rays is half lines. So a ray starts here like a ray gun and shoots this way. Here's another ray shooting that way. Here's another ray sh shooting that way. So if I put some points here, let's see here, X, Y, B, C, here's M. Okay, so if I wanted to list all the angles in this diagram, well, there's quite a few. Um, well, there's not quite a few, but there's quite a few ways to name these angles. How many angles do you see in this diagram? Well, I see this little guy, this kind of bigger guy and then I see the whole thing so here's one angle one angle two all right and then I see this whole thing right here and we can call that angle three I guess but there's different ways to name these angles okay so this guy I can name this angle um, angle I can't say angle a because there's multiple things coming out of angle a so I need three letters and the, only, the way to name, a, name an angle is the vertex just has to be in the middle. Okay, so this is my vertex for all the angles that I'm going to name. So I can say angle XAB. I could also say angle BAX. It doesn't matter what order you do it in. I could say angle YAB is the same angle. All I have to do is pick one of the points on this side and one of the points on this side or angle B, A, Y. I could say angle X, A, C, right? Because I'm just picking one of the points on that side or angle C, A, X. See how there's, there's a ton of ways you can 
Name just this one angle. Okay. And then I've got this angle right here, this angle. So this, at least we only have one letter to choose from over here. So this is angle M-A-B or angle B-A-M, angle M-A-C or angle C-A-M, okay? So there's only a couple different options there. All right, but then I've got the whole big angle, right? So this guy right here, this angle here, so that's either angle M A X, angle X A M, angle M A Y, or angle Y A M. Okay, so if you notice, the only thing all of these angles have in common is this letter, letter in the middle. So that's, you're kind of coming around the angle so that vertex always has to be in the middle. So this is important. You need to know how to re-identify angles and to be able to label the angles, okay? That's very important. Now, we would call these two angles adjacent angles. Adjacent means like, right next to each other, okay? So your adjacent neighbor is your next door neighbor. So you guys share, your, with your neighbor, you share a property line. Um, so this could be like the fence in between your neighbor's house and your house, right? Or your neighbor's yard and your yard. Um, so that's what it means to be adjacent, right next to each other. So adjacent angles, have to share one side and the same vertex, all right? So that's important to know. Adjacent angles have to share a side and the same vertex. So for example, adjacent angles, these are not adjacent angles. If I had this scenario, one and two, uh, these are not adjacent because they have to have the same vertex. They don't have the same vertex. So if they have different vertices, then they are not adjacent. Okay. Um, here's an example of some very popular adjacent angles. Okay, so if I had angle C, or I don't know why they did that. So this angle three and four are adjacent angles. These are adjacent angles, but they also open up all the way to a straight line. So we call these uh, supplementary angles. So you guys have probably heard that term before. So remember supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. You guys remember the name of the angle that at the angles that add up to 90 degrees? Starts with the sounds a lot like supplementary. You guys remember the word? Complimentary. Yep, complimentary. Good job. All right. So these are an example. Uh, angles three and four are an example of supplementary angles. If I were to do something like this, like angles five and six would be... Uh, complementary angles, right? Because they add up to 90 degrees. All right? Okay, now, uh, this is a tricky part, but basically the next part of this lesson is, uh, well, before we do that, let's just do an example where you need to apply these, uh, just what it means to be complementary and supplementary. 
Okay. So let's say that this angle is 30 degrees and we know that this is a right angle there. So I want you to find this angle. So let's, let's label this. So I want to find the measure of angle A, B, C. Can you guys figure out what that is? Did somebody say 60? Mm -hmm. All right, that was quick. Good job. Okay, what about this? See if you can find the measure of... of D, E, F. What is the measure of D, E, F? Nice, right. So it's 180 minus 45, because you know that they're supplementary. 135 degrees, very good. All right, the next part is using a protractor, which is very difficult to do via Zoom. Um, but we, uh, I'm just going to do my best here. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to measure an angle using a protractor. And there is like a little gift that I could use to do that, but I'm just going to try to draw something. So here's what needs to happen in a protractor. And I actually should have some in my closet over there, but uh, I think a lot of you already know how to use a protractor, but I'm going to show you real quick. So basically you have to put your protractor. So a lot of protractors are just flat like this. And then they have like a little arch here, right? So there's a center point. And sometimes on the protractor, there's a little hole where you put the vertex of the angle. So that needs to go right there. And then you need to line up one of the sides of the angle on the bottom of the protractor, okay? So then it's gonna give you some numbers over here, but there's two rows of numbers. So this number like goes like, maybe this is 130, this is 140, but then you've got the numbers underneath it, like this is 50 and this is 40, okay? So either way, this is either 135 or 45. Which one do you think this angle is? Do you think this angle is a 135 degree angle or a 45 degree angle? 45. Yeah, so usually you can just use your best judgment, but the numbers on the bottom are the numbers that you read if you line up the project the protractor on the right side of the angle, okay? If you were to go backwards and put the protractor over here, then you would use the top numbers. But either way, you could probably figure out which number is the right number, right? This is an acute angle, so this has got to be the number that's less than 90. Um, and then the other, so basically these numbers are all supplementary angles. So there's an acute angle and there's an, an uh, obtuse angle. So over here, we would have those same numbers, 140 and then 130. And then you've got, you have, uh, oops, did I do it wrong? Let me scoot back here. So, and, this case, the numbers are on the, the numbers on the top are the smaller ones over here, and then this is where it's 140 and 130. Okay, so if I were to measure the protractor on this side, then I would have wanted the top numbers, not the bottom numbers. Okay, but it's kind of like, well, you could memorize which ones are supposed to go with what, or you could just use your common sense, this is not a 135 degree angle, this is a 45 degree angle, okay? So wherever this line crosses is the measure of the angle, all right? And you decide whether it's the top numbers or the, or the bottom numbers. Okay, that's basically it for 
98, 97 and 98. Okay. So if you don't have a protractor, you can actually get an app. That's a protractor and it's actually uses your camera and you can put your phone down on top of the angle or you just hold it there and then you line it up with the side and you can tell what the measurement is. It's pretty cool. Um, but protractors are like 99 cents at Walmart and that was on your supply list. But if you don't have one, um, there's an app for that. But every household should have a protractor. You never know when you're going to need it. Okay, but that's it. Any questions that you guys have? Black